Hello and welcome back to 100 Days of Code with Here. My name is Shruti and we are in week 4 of 100 Days of Code with Here already. So if you have no idea what I'm still talking about, uh, we have some blogs in the description below and you'll uh, just click on those blog posts and you'll know everything about 100 Days of Code. We also have a link to the GitHub repository. So if you're starting out just today, you can just copy the code uh, for the last few days and um, like, like I've mentioned in the videos before we've been posting a task every day since the 1st of April and we are doing this for 100 days so this week uh, this video in particular is the solutions video for day 16 through 20 uh, now if you uh, again if you have missed day solutions for days 0 to 15 we have the blogs in the description as well as the link to the other videos the older videos so without further ado let's begin day 16 uh, was or rather day 0 through 15 was uh, just getting a basic map uh, including zooming panning having markers, having them move, etc. But we haven't really played around with the map itself. We haven't really styled the map itself. We we just uh, took the default. If you if you if you remember we included the create default map layer and uh, we just took the default layers of the maps. And this time with uh, with this week we are going to style the map a little bit. So day 16 was all about changing the font of the map. So now this not only introduces you how you could change the font, but also a bunch of other parameters that you can change with the map. So if you, again, if you go to documentation, vector tile and JavaScript API, and if you see, if you scroll along here, you'll see hidden in the documentation is a nice little tool called style editing. And the map style editor is basically, it'll tell you everything, uh, the style of the map and the way it is uh, arranged. You can also read about it here. So if you go to the vector maps and in that, if you go to the structural overview, you'll get to see that how the layers are actually arranged. What are the layers? What is land use? What is, what is the water layer, etc. And uh, basically you'll find the description here. And in the map style editor, I'm going to make a small little change. I'm just going to change the font to Arial. And now you can see the font of the whole map has changed. And I'm going to download this file as uh, Arial font whatever dot YAML. So font Arial dot YAML. Now I have already done this. I have this file in my styles uh, folder. So I'm going to load this file. So this particular day, day 16, we want to change the style of the map uh, on load. So before the map is online. So we are going to load the complete style of the map. So I'm going to do this right here. So what I have is the provider. And I'm going to get the base layer of the map. So map dot get base layer and then get provider now I'm going to define the map style so if you if you see Again, if you go to the examples page, you'll find a similar example, which will just make it easier for you to see how this is done. So if you go to the examples page, you'll find this, which is set a map style at load time. So this is what we're trying to do. So they've introduced more changes in the map style file. We've just changed the font. So I'm just going to copy this here. So I've taken the provider. I want the style and then this I'm going to copy it here now this is where the style styling file is now I have downloaded this in my folder so I'm just going to name it as uh, 
styles. So I have style slash font underscore Arial dot YML and here you go. So if you do this, the whole styling of the map should change in terms of the font itself. So that's it for day 16. That was day 16. Uh, on day 17, we're going to do something a little bit different. So uh, what we changed was the style before load. This time we're going to say uh, change the style at runtime. So what I've done is basically created a button. And uh, when I click the button, I need to highlight all the hospitals near me in red. That's it. And so now I don't have to, I don't want to search for hospitals and turn them red, but then hospitals are part of the layer of the map. And I want to use that property to change the color of those. So if you go back to the map style editor, you will see that uh, hospitals are the layer which is a part of the land use layer. So if you go to layers within that and then you have the parks, national forest, beaches and then if you scroll further down you have hospitals. So what we're interested in is the hospital layer and within that we need to change the color of um, the hospital which right now is the global global color so what we want to do is change this into uh, the color red so what we're going to do is again you can just follow this example what we need to do here is that first we need to get the base style of um, of the map so you have the hospital style let's say and from the provider that we defined earlier I'm going to get the style of the map so provider dot get style now I need to change the configuration or define the configuration of this of this particular layer. So I have hospital config equals. So now from this style, I need to extract the configuration. So I have style dot extract config. And in that, I want to extract land use dot hospital. So I have land use dot hospital. Now, once I extract the config, I want to uh, change the configuration. So I have hospital config. Now, in that, we need to go step by step. So you had layers, then you had the land use then you had hospital in that you want to change the properties where uh, within the draw section polygons and then color of the polygons and now I'm going to set this to RGB 25500 which is the color red You can also use RGBA and give it a little transparency or you can also you can also of course use any color you want. This is just for a presentation. So I've changed the color to red and now I need to merge this config. So you have hospital style in that you want to merge config. Merge config and then you have the hospital config that we created just now. So once I do this, what I'm going to do is click on click on the highlights hospital button. And with that, what we expect is all the hospitals on the map 
will be highlighted with the red. So there you see. All the hospitals as a layer itself have been highlighted to the color red. That's it for day 7. Now on day 18, we want to change the uh, language of the, of the map. So by default, the UI language is English. You can see all the country names in English as well. But if I want to change the way my map looks, I can always change it into my local language. And again, you can do that in two different forms. I'm going to show you the easiest one first. So if you go to my, uh, documentation, of the basic maps and if you click on map controls and UI you'll see that if you scroll down a little the UI modules comes with a localization of languages and then you can just choose from any of these languages and the simplest is uh, the simple part is that or the best part is that you can just add it where we created the default map layer so you can just add the language code in the default layer. So I have the UI default layer here. I'm just going to paste this. And if you come back to your code, you'll see that this is now in Deutsch. So as you can see, the menu has, uh, is in Deutsch. Although the, the country names are still in the normal English uh, language that you see. So if you want to change that, what you can do is go to the style document. And in that, if you see the UX language is EN, you can change that to DE. And you'll see that the entire language of the map itself has changed to German, Deutsch, which means you'll see things like the United States of America is no more called that, but it's the German version of it. So France is called Frankreich. And then if you go to the United States, so you can see that you can change the map UX and UI languages into uh, whatever language you want. And in the documentation, you'll see the supported languages as well. So that's it for day 18. Now with day 18, we already changed the uh, language of the map settings and etc. With day 19, what we want to do is change the position of the map settings itself. So if you stay on the same page as the map controls and UI, if you scroll down a little or rather scroll up, let me see. Yeah, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that all these, uh, these are basically map controls and you can change the map controls, the position of the map controls. So again, we just want the settings bar. So I'm going to change this. I want this. I want to take the map settings bar or the control and then set its alignment to top right. So there you have it. You have the map settings bar in the top right. And again, to know where you can, what you can write instead of top left, top right, you, can, you just go to the API reference. And within that, you have maps.ui. So h.ui and then control. And just in the alignment, you'll be able to see top left, top center, top right, and you can just basically align your map controls there. So that's it for day 19. Now with day 20, what we're trying to do is change the, the unit system of the map. So if you can see here, you have the small scale bar, which is which says five kilometers now. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, it says five kilometers. And if you just click on this, it'll toggle to miles. But this is this I need to toggle this. And if I come from a country who measures distance in miles, I may want to have it permanently in miles and not in kilometers. So again, I want to change the unit system of this map. So if you again stay on the namespace uh, UI, so h.ui API reference, if you go down, you'll see that you have the unit system and then you have 
two options, which is imperial unit system and the metric system. So right now the default is the metric system and we want to change it to the imperial system to get miles or distance in miles. So again, this is super intuitive, which is you have the UI dot set unit system. Set unit system and in that you have the h dot ui dot unit system and then we want imperial so I'm going to copy this and now if I save this I will see that this is by default in miles which was in meters before so that's it for day 20 so with this we complete the day 16 to 20 of 100 days of code so as a reminder you can also read a blog post about this solution instead of a video so you have the links in uh, the description we also have the repositories of uh, the codes until now so you go and check out the repository and uh, keep following 100 days of code on twitter we are posting these tasks on at your dev on twitter so keep posting your replies or keep posting your uh, your solutions codes or uh, repositories as replies and keep following 100 days of code happy coding